walking around Slabox. Today we're going to tie the foam diver. Uh, it's going to function exactly like a deer hair diver for those of you who don't prefer to uh, spin deer hair and you want a good durable fly. This is an excellent choice. Uh, does very well for me when I choose to tie it and use it. I'm going to start off with a size 2 Gamagatsu stinger hook and 3 aught thread black. And we're going to start our thread wrap it the length of the shank we need some thread to adhere to and the first material that we're going to tie in is bucktail for this particular pattern I'm using olive bucktail And again, you'll hear me say about the size of a, a pencil. All I do is hand stack it, pull the long ones out, throw them back in, get them to their somewhat even, pull out most of the flyers, clean off the butt ends just to get that stuff off my fingers. And I'm going to measure this be approximately two times the length of the shank. Grip it at that part. Cut off with about a quarter inch extending past that point and tie it in. Good and tight. Lock it in place. Next material I'm going to tie in for this particular pattern is a hackle. This is strung hackle. I'm going to use barred yellow for this pattern. I don't trim it. I just uh, I place it on the side of the hook the near side first so it's just short of the length of the tail Give a few wraps don't try and lock it down immediately you want to be able to adjust it a little bit and then put the second side in I go to the far side this this is just my technique works better for me to keep them aligned if uh, you want to pinch wrap them both on same time, by all means, do so. And I'm going to adjust the length after I get them tied in. That's about even. At that point, I'll pinch and wrap ahead so they don't spin and move. And then trim off the butt ends. try and be too particular. This fly is going to take a pounding, get beat up in algae, lily pad stalks, and whatnot. And then what I do here, I throw a whip finish in. Probably doesn't do anything, but it helps me with my confidence as I go forward with bigger bugs. We're going to bring our thread to the front at this point. The next pair we're going to tie in is the body material. I use medium. I think this is two millimeter or could be three. I buy it in packs of uh, small, medium, and large. This is the medium, the middle. What I do is I trim it to three inches long. Okay. And then I make the base or the wide end three quarters of an inch and the bottom a quarter. I use the first one as a template and then I cut a bunch of them out. They'll come out stacked about like this right here. I cut a bunch out so they're even. And again I make it three inches long. What we're going to do first before we tie this in is I take Sally Henson's the brush applicator a liberal, a liberal amount on there. And bring my thread back just a little bit, about an eye length back. Pinch that foam on there good and tight. And wrap back. You can wrap back to the tie-in point of your tail. I lift to make sure that I'm not crowding it too much. 
and then bind over it good and tight. Don't be bashful. And then I'll bring my thread back to the back end there. Let it set. Next material you're going to tie in for this particular pattern. I use three centipede legs, barred centipede legs. You can do whatever color. Again, this is just the color of the pattern that I'm tying today for this video. But I use two, one, and one contrasting color. For this one right here, I'm going to use and get a full length one there. I seem to have cut one short. I'm going to use yellow and dark olive. Dark olive being the contrasting color. Three strands. I take a bite on my thread. Even it by hand. So I don't have any way too long. You're going to trim these a little bit anyway, but but get them close. Then you're going to bring your thread up to the top where that bite is, pull it tight, bring the other end around, and grab that bite. Not an exact science. In the end, you want Two, you want three strands on either side, two yellow, one green. And if they'll cooperate a little bit, get a couple more wraps right in front. Then the next material you're going to tie in is your, your uh, abdomen. I use yellow and black variegated chenille. This particular brand here is from Cabela's can find it all over the place. Doesn't have to be, but again, I use chenille for the body. I don't want it, I want it to sink a little bit. This fly has a little bit of neutral buoyancy. You don't want everything to tie on, that you tie on this fly to be floating or high floating. It is a diver. And then we're going to wrap that chenille on there. Being careful not to capture a leg. one in front of the other. I have a tendency to let go of this stuff as I tie it. So be careful, the chenille can get a little slippery. And we made it without losing our grip. And again with all big bugs, especially when I'm going to trans transition to another material, I like to throw in a quick two turn whip finish just to keep everything honest. Okay, next material, or I'm not going to tie in any more material, but the next step is to bring your foam forward. Now, it's, this isn't like some of the wog patterns you'll see. You don't want these legs to come forward, you want them all to remain to the rear. So, tuck them in tight like that so that they face down and you want to pull your foam fairly tight get two good wraps on there and what I like to do is switch my hands pull that thing tight you're gonna to have to put a little pressure on it so make sure you got good thread put some extra wraps in there to lock it and what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your head forward and you're gonna make your head about two eye lengths beyond the eye. Pinch it. Be like a little hammerhead shark. Pull it tight. Get some good secure wraps in it. And then a good four or five turn whip finish. 
put a lot of pressure on this fly. You'll see my vise moving around a little bit. And as far as tying goes, that's about the end of it. Now what you're going to do to turn into a diver, this normally would be the final stage really of a wog or a gurgler, but you've tied a shorter head, a tighter head, and you've given it a longer, a little bit longer and wider cape. So you're going to come back here and leave about a quarter inch of the body, the abdomen showing underneath the cape, cut it off. Now what you're going to have is you're going to have a line. You can see the angle of your body right here, the cape. You're going to trim the head to match that. So you're going to trim your head, come in here, line your scissors up, trim it off. Careful not to trim your legs off. Line your scissors up, trim it off. A little bit extra on there. And you're going to knock your corners down here real quick. And there you go. Trim your legs to even length. We'll spin that around. And then last but not least, when I'm all done, I'll flip it upside down right on the bottom side of the collar. I put a little uh, super glue in there. Trapped a little bit of fiber. Not going to do anything, but. And there you go. There's your diver. Uh, we missed one little bit here. And I'll take it out of the vise and trim it like I usually do. You go. The foam diver. Floats very well, dives perfectly, pops back up to the top, gives you the diver action with um, without spinning deer hair and trimming it in the diver fashion. Hope this has your box that has mine. It's very effective in the weeds pattern at a, uh, at a, a uh, point guard to this, weed guard, and uh, this is almost an indestructible fly, depending on what your water needs. Thank you very much. See you in the water.